Great Short Lines West is a documentary on smaller railroads that bring good service to their online customers. We bring the Central California Traction Company before the line from Sacramento to Lodi was eliminated in 1998. The video shows earlier diesel power and explains the inner urban electric history of the railroad. The smaller Alco switchers were replaced with larger diesels that served the CTC into the 1990s. The video outlines the long history of the line and how it once served three larger railroads. We bring the switching of online customers and plenty of mainline action. Many of the sidings had very tight curves on track laid long ago for small electric locomotives and when freight cars were usually 40 feet long or even less. The Amador Central survived until 1997 to serve the Georgia Pacific shipping wood products. line ran from Ione to Martell in the Sierra foothills. The road used Baldwin power until it eventually bought EMD power to retire the older Baldwins. The main line allowed a brisk 10 mile an hour speed and the yards were restricted to 5 miles an hour. The EMD switcher runs past what used to be a station for both freight and, long ago, passengers. The Amador's only connection to the outside world was with the Southern Pacific at a small yard in Ione, California. The Angelina and Natchez River Railroad runs from Dunnegan to Lufkin, Texas with nearly 30 total miles of track. Our camera operators were the guests of ANR in 1998, allowing us to interview key employees as they went about their duties, and of course follow and ride the trains. It's a fascinating look at a successful short line. Here are a few excerpts from the video. We're in the railroad business moving freight around from, from point to point, but in reality as a short line what we do best is service, and, and I often tell our people we're really in the service business. Uh, to our shippers, they may be shipping a, a load of newsprint to Chicago, and we only carry that car load from, from point A to point B where it connects with the main line. But as far as they're concerned, we are the railroad. And if something happens between here and St. Louis or Chicago, it's, it's us that they call. So one of the things, uh, I guess, as a short line railroad that we really uh, strive is, is our customer service. That's really all we have to sell. One of the locomotives is a 1958 Alco. This diesel looks like it came off the showroom floor, as do all three of their locomotives. Uh, this is a 1958 model Alco switcher, 1,000 horsepower, has a 539T diesel motor in it. It has individual heads on it. Each cylinder has its own own individual head, and this motor is a four-stroke. And in other words, it, this engine has intake valves and exhaust valves. That that our EMDs have, you know, they have exhaust. All the valves are exhaust, and it has intake ports. But uh, other than than uh, heads going bad, this engine is pretty pretty maintenance free. Well, I I, I think the uh, controls on this Alco here. 58 model Alco is really one of the simpler controls to be good for a student engineer to learn on. Really, uh, this is your independent brake here, and it's real simple to operate. This is your uh, train line brake. It, it works just like the rest of them, and the throttle here. This line dates from the 1880s, and it serves local industries even today. We visited the Central Oregon and Pacific Regional Line in 1998 when things were booming. This was a former Southern Pacific line. 
As guests, our camera crew made a cab ride over the Siskiyou grade, while a second crew shot the action from the ground. The tight turns on the north slope add to the power required to muscle trains up this grade. Loaded trains were generally headed south. The grades on this line are 3.3% on the north slope and 3.6% on the south slope. This made a scenic and thrilling ride in a group of six locomotives. We have several interviews to inform the viewer as to why this line has such special meaning and how well trained the train crews had to be. Uh, grades that we have is uh, is Bailey Hill in California. That grade too uh, has 3.6% 3 uh, 3 grade and uh, its summit uh, when approached from the north go going south is a dramatic drop. I mean the, tr the track just disappears in front of you. Our train is near the peak, entering the last tunnel. The grade actually begins a downhill mode inside the tunnel, and the video explains how this required extra care in train setup. Just before we entered Tunnel 13, the climb ended, and as the train began to transfer its length to a downhill train, the engineer followed a procedure to prepare for the safe descent. Because of this uh, telemetry with the rear end device, we, might, we want to make sure that we've got air set and that the air drop, air pressure drop in the rear of the train before we enter the tunnel. What we do is just before we enter the tunnel, we go ahead and grab a minimum set, which is about a seven pound reduction, and uh, make sure that... The plunge down the south slope could get away from a crew unaware of the 3.6% descent. This is a thrilling look into an amazing and historic piece of transportation history. We look back decades ago to the Stockton Terminal in Eastern that serves the fertile area of food production. The ST&E favored Alco switchers for their easy manners on older light trackage. We look at the Modesto Empire and Traction back when they preferred pairs of GE 70-ton switchers to serve their many customers around the Modesto, California area. The Ventura County Railway also used Alcos and we look back into the early 1990s in Oxnard, California. The Southwest Portland Cement Rail Line connects the limestone quarry at the base of Sidewinder Mountain to the cement plant in Victorville, California. The action continues with old Baldwin power used by the 31 mile long Trona Railroad out to a potash plant. Don't miss this look back into some great short line, regional line, and specialty lines at your nearest hobby dealer.